Welcome to Moving People Forward with Mark Elfstrand. This program is a series of conversations on commonly seen challenges in everyday people's lives. We hope you'll be inspired by the stories you hear today. Perhaps you know of someone who would also benefit. Be sure to share the program link with a friend. Now, here's Mark. Where are you in the frustrated about life scale? Well, probably it's not exact scale like that, but maybe have you pursued spiritual answers, but you're still finding a gaping hole in fulfillment? Inner peace is not always inner peace is not always easy to come by. The search for answers might be more difficult than we can handle. Some might even give up on that journey. Well, today I think we can help you move forward in this journey, and that help comes from an experienced voice. With me today on Moving People Forward is Dr. Lena Abu Jamra, and she is a pediatric ER doctor and the founder of Living with Power Ministries. She's also an author, a podcaster, and a radio host. And Dr. Lena, welcome. Good to have you with us. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, your life began in Beirut, Lebanon. So take us on a little bit of a journey of, uh, wow, how you got to Chicago. Yeah, we uh, are Lebanese. My mom is actually Palestinian and my dad is Lebanese, but she moved to Lebanon back in the 60s, actually actually in the 40s, uh, the, during the, um, well, the Palestinian uh, exodus from Israel. And they ended up settling down there and later met my dad and got married. She had just received Jesus maybe um, a few couple years before she got married. And it was very dramatic and it was in her college years. And she ended up really being the reason that we all ended up coming to faith in Christ. But uh, I grew up in the church in essence. My mom took us to the small you know, missionary church down in, in West Beirut, not far from the American University. My okay. dad worked at the American University. He was a plastic surgeon. And he did not receive Jesus until about four years before we moved. By then, the Civil War was at its peak. It was a very dangerous place to live, but it was sort of normal for us. And in the summers, we would leave town, come to the States, renew our visas. We had American papers. Uh, we had a green card. And so uh, we kept doing that for a few years. And every year, they would talk about, should we move? Should we move? And it got to the point where the war got really bad. Mm. And they just decided, by then my dad had received the Lord, and so he was starting to grow in his faith. And uh, it was just God's perfect timing. And so we moved to Green Bay, Wisconsin. Uh, yeah. And that is how, That's home still now. today. Yeah, we are sadly to today <laughs> grieving still uh, <laughs> the, the, the loss of the Packers. <laughs> right. Yeah, against the 49ers, and yeah. I hated that game. But anyway. Yeah, yeah and that yeah. is the way it is. That's right, in, yeah. Uh, in sports. <laughs> okay, well, but recently, uh, haven't you returned to Lebanon? Yeah, I uh, about five-ish, six years ago when the Syrian refugee crisis was starting to grow, it was about 2012, yeah. that the Syrian refugee crisis sort of became more national news. People would see pictures of the kids on the boats coming you know, to Turkey and right. Greece and, and to Lebanon. And, and in Lebanon, they didn't take a boat. They would walk and literally over a mountain slope and end up in a town called Zahle and other towns. And, and as we were looking at you know, what God would do in my ministry at the time. I was in a women's ministry teaching um, a lot of Bible studies and involved in a church. I led the women's ministry at a church. And I had just transitioned out of that role and praying over what God would do next. And I started watching that and thinking, you know, there's got to be something here. I'm Lebanese. I speak Arabic. I, I long to serve the Lord with people in need and crisis. You know, I'm an ER doctor. And so I, the more I prayed about it, the opportunity just sort of presented itself to go and do a vision trip. And out of that vision trip, I then visited Lebanon and a few months later went back to do a conference actually for some of the books I'd written. We got them translated into Arabic. Uh. And then that visit, when we went to do the conference, I took a side trip and, and went and met a pastor who was doing work with the Syrian refugees. And we launched about now four years ago, uh, medical and dental trips. We have gone until this year, four times a year. This year we've cut it down to two because of the situation there right now. There's a lot of instability, but we continue now. At this point, we have work with the church down in Lebanon. And so we support monthly um, families who have given their life to Christ, who are persecuted for the faith. So we uh, support housing, food, education, 
and a nursing training program, a nurse's aide training program. So we've got a lot going on on the ground. We're no longer as critical to being there, but we want to go regularly to keep up with the work. And because we love it, honestly, the Syrian people are wonderful and their hearts for the Lord are uh, so on fire right now. So it's been a lot of fun. I plan to go in March, God willing, but we're praying for safety and a calm situation. There's mm. just some unrest in the news right now. So. Are, are those people who are followers of Jesus, are they facing significant persecution? Yes, yeah, yeah, very much so. Most of the persecution comes from their own families. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're from Muslim backgrounds, and so any Muslim who gives their life to Christ becomes basically um, hated and, and, and worthy of death. Mm. And so many of them uh, are threatened. Uh, Lebanon is an open country and there's some protection. So this is again God's hand and how he uh, uses a bad situation for good. So the crisis that forced them out of Syria into a community in Lebanon that has more religious freedom right. has allowed them now to trust the Lord, go to church, but still be cautious. Uh, little things, for instance, women still cover themselves with the hijab, not because they believe in it anymore, oh. but out of safety so that oh. they're not attacked by their own people. That would be a very big affront. So there's just a lot of sort of sensitivity to the culture in the settings where you come to Christ with a lot of threat to your life. Mm. But their love for the Word of God and for the Son of God is unparalleled of any people I've met. Well, you started uh, an organization uh, called Living with Power yeah. in uh, 2012. What was fueling that? Well, I felt called personally to teach the Bible back in early 2000. And so over the course of the years, as you take little steps of obedience and God sort of opens doors and you keep saying yes, you sort of, God gives you vision for what could happen. And I sort of foresaw that God might do more in our ministry. I didn't know exactly what. I wasn't sure if we would write books as I've ended up doing or, or teach at conferences, or I had no ambition to start a, a, a global project or whatnot. And, and, and I, I had the foresight at one point, late in 2010, closer to 10, I thought, well, I think we're going to need a nonprofit. And so Living with Power started with that in mind, of knowing that we're going to be producing Bible studies at the very least, and who knows what else, and we want to be positioned to do the most for the kingdom of God. And as a woman who uh, was not trained in ministry, I'm a doctor, so I was bivocational, I, I, I felt that this would be a good way to serve the Lord and still be involved in the local church. And now look where God has done. And so yeah. you look back and go, oh my gosh, it was brilliant, but it was really a step of faith, saying yes to God yeah. one step at a time. So. Well, but you uh, actually said uh, that your own life didn't reflect power. In fact, you felt like a victim right. instead of an overcomer and you were unsatisfied with what you'd accomplished, which was rather significant. <laughs> what was missing? I, you know, it's, I, it's, I, I will say it's continued to be a struggle. I think every one of us has uh, sort of points of, of insecurities and vulnerabilities and pain and Satan knows them and he comes at you in them. And I think the more you grow in knowing yourself and the Lord, the more you are uh, adept and able to fight in faith. And back when I wrote those words, yes. it was actually at the beginning when we first launched, it was like an introductory video, I would stand by them and say, that battle continues, but with greater victory. Sometimes, as you know, Mark, with greater attack from the enemy, but yeah. also greater victory. Because I think in order to continue to live with power, which is, my ministry, Living with Power, there has to be a consistent fixing of your eyes on who Jesus is and what he has promised. And that takes a striving, a working out of your faith, a relationship with the Lord that you feed day in and day out. Mm. Well, if you relate to exactly what's being talked about here, we're going to give you some resources that can help you navigate life on this journey. Uh, we'll talk about that coming up in just a moment. My guest is Dr. Lena Abu Jamra, a pediatric ER doctor and founder of Living With Power Ministries. And we're gonna explain more about how you can live with power in your own life coming up in just a moment. God is our safe place and our strength. He is always our help when we are in trouble. This word of God in Psalm 46, one says it all. God is our safe place. He is our strength. He is our help when we are in trouble. 
Whenever and wherever we are invited, nationally or internationally, Lutheran Church Charities' mission is to bring the mercy, compassion, presence, and proclamation of Jesus Christ to those who are suffering and in need. LCC is a ministry of presence, to be present with Jesus, to lift up people in times of joy and sorrow, in prayer, and by passing through donations of dollar per dollar to those in need. Through our canine ministries, we respond and deploy with boots on the ground and paws <laughs> within 24 hours, often sooner, of any crisis or disaster situation we're invited into. You see, for us, the bottom line is making a difference by being present. For people who are suffering and in need with that mercy, compassion, presence of Jesus Christ. Thank you again for allowing us the privilege to stand alongside and serve others. Jesus and your partnership make that possible to touch thousands of lives. This is Moving People Forward. I'm Mark Elfstrand. We're discussing how to overcome feelings of defeat with life-transforming power. And my guest is Dr. Lena Abujamra, pediatric ER doctor and founder of Living With Power Ministries. I want to go back to another quote that I read uh, from uh, your own words here. Inability is the very thing God will use to show you His strength. How did that play out for you? Yeah, I think a lot of people assume, you know, you, if you're a doctor, you know, you've got it all together, you know, and, and I think in general, I'm sort of independent. My personality gives the impression that I've got it all together, but no one has it all together. All right. I mean, at the end of the day, everyone ha has doubt inside. Will I be able to do this? Well, and, and over the course of time, I think intentionally, I think by God's design, we encounter failure. And, and I think sometimes those failures are because of the way that we execute things, or other times it's a gift in order for God to get us in a place where we can actually say, okay, God, I need you. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think that's the point of our relationship with God at the beginning, is an, ident an, an understanding, an identification that I cannot save myself, I need the Lord. And so you start off with this absolute dependence of saying, I'm a sinner, I need the Lord. And then we jump into the Christian life with this, I'm gonna get it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get this right. And, and you do it in serving the Lord. I'm, mm. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to And you're so excited about God and your motives may be good, but the way that you play it out moves away from faith into, I got this yeah. until you don't. Mm -hmm. And so it, in, in this, this feeling of inadequacy, this, this inability, the weakness Paul talks about that we're given is a gift. That, that ought to lead us, it's, it's, it doesn't feel like a gift when you look at it and resent it and fight it and try harder. But when you get to the end of yourself, which was what I've learned repeatedly in my life, is at some point you get to the end of yourself where you try because you're too stubborn not to. And then you kind of go, oh, I, I'm exhausted. I can't do this. And that's precisely when I think you can say, oh, God, I need you. And the minute you say that, he's like, I've been here all along. Yeah. And then there's such peace and, and really a, I, I feel like in this season, God has brought me back in a deeper way to this place of dependence where, where I've looked at, you know, the older you get, the, the more of a resume you have of both victories, but also failures. And so the older you get in the faith, you think naturally as a young person, I used to think it's going to get easier, but it really doesn't right. because now you have more life and you have more expectation, right. but you also have more rejections and more pain and more defeats. And now if you have to really get into the word again go back to the basics like revelation talks so much about our the churches that struggled and, and again and again the admonition was repent and go back to the first thing repent and go back to the first thing and i've had to do that again and again in my life where i say okay god let's go back to the basic what was it it was mary sitting at the feet of jesus yeah it is feeding that vertical that relationship with god where you where you really have an intimate sense of his presence in your life 
That's that's the secret to the Christian life. Yeah, I think at times we uh, hear about you know you know you started with milk and some of you haven't advanced beyond that. Well, sometimes you do advance beyond that, but then you get kind of tied up in that, right? And and, and you kind of do have to go back and, yeah. and grab the, yeah. the the solid food of milk, which then takes right. you to the more solid food of meat right. in terms of right. your spiritual life. A little more complex than we have time for. Right. Okay, but let's talk about three <laughs> words uh, as in the journey of living with power. The first word is this one, and it's. Thrive, one of the uh, three books here that we have from Dr. Lena, and uh, The Single Life as God Intended. Yeah. Well, so why the ministry to singles? Well, I am single, so that makes sense. God uses every one of us with our own gifts and our own ability. And I think singleness is a gift, okay. whether you want it or not, and I talk about that in that book. Yeah. But yeah, it was the first book I wrote, and, and the publishers had come to me and asked me to write a book about singleness. At the time, I, I sort of, it was funny, I wouldn't have, I didn't necessarily want to, but God had, at that point, I was in my, I don't know, mid-30s, and God had really worked a story of singleness in my life, and where I didn't see it as a story, I saw it as failure. I'd broken two engagements, I got engaged twice, and I had a relationship early in my 20s that I thought I would end up into who the person I would marry, and that felt that he was, that person was my best friend. So there was a story. And I had a chance to tell the story using also biblical principles to help single people thrive uh, even in their singleness. So that's mm. been a wonderful book to encourage many singles. Okay, so then we have a second word here. This one is called Stripped, When God's Call Turns From Yes to Why Me. I assume you've experienced yeah, uh, this, this is as well. Yeah, this is what we've been talking about. And so so uh, the, the people that I look at in the book where, you know, I sort of use the model of scripture in e each of my books. Here, it's the people of Israel. They're called out of Egypt to the promised land, but then they've got this wilderness. And so much like us, like we know God has called us to something great. We, many Christians believe Jeremiah 29, 11. God has a hope and a future for us, but we forget it or we doubt it or we disbelieve it when we hit the wilderness yeah. because we, we mm -hmm. don't understand it. That's what that book is about. All right, book number three, Resolved. And in this case, 10 ways to stand strong and live what you believe. Yeah. Uh, do you find that that kind of thinking is probably missing more in this generation? Uh, yeah, for sure. I think there's a, you know, there's a, a, sometimes a lack of conviction in a sense. Anything goes, your way is your way, my way is my way. So this book is a very empowering book that really hits up 10 areas of faith and walking with God. It's a, it's a book that grew out of a season again where I felt a little shaken in my faith. And yeah. it, it's a way to, that helped me go back to biblical story and look at ways to be unshaken no matter what you're going through. And okay. so I just look at it from 10 different angles. They all have Bible studies that are available with it uh, that are very, I think, um, useful for people to do to grow in their walk with the Lord. Now you have a podcast, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it comes Who does out? it now? Yeah, right, right, right. right, right. And, and how often does it come out? Weekly. Okay. We take here and there some se and summers off and things, but generally we have seasons. And yeah. how would people find that? It's uh, Everything is on our website, livingwithpower.org. We also okay. have an app called Living With Power. You can download on your phones, or you can just go to iTunes and put in the Hope Podcast. We're all about hope. All right, yeah. very good. Now, you speak four languages. Yeah. And uh, why four? We grew up in a country that didn't give us a choice. Okay. <laughs> so we learned them in school. French was my um, educational background. Okay. Arabic was our native language and English, obviously. Yeah. And then Spanish I learned in the ER. So you just chose to. Well, you had to. You had to, <laughs> If huh? you didn't learn Spanish, ER. you didn't get out of the ER, but yeah. on time. You had to wait for the translator. And so you learned by default. It's very, once you know a few languages, it's easier to pick up a lot of uh, languages and communicating with people. But, no, we, we were joking about, uh, well, not even necessarily joking about your the fact that you're single. Right. But that you've, you know, turned down a couple of opportunities. Right. right. And it's kind of walked away. But then anybody who has kind of watched what you're doing goes, who could possibly keep up with her? <laughs> I can't even. No, honestly, it's the, people say to me all the time, well, how do you do this? And I'm always like, it's easy. I didn't marry. Like, you know, married people don't do what they probably see, but, you know, it's easy to look at someone's life and be like, oh, I can't believe you're doing so much for the Lord. And I'm like, yeah, but you're married with three or four or five kids. Like, so it's a different type of ministry you've been given. And so uh, we don't know what the future holds. Like right now, I'd say I'm probably single for life, but I... I think that as long as God is using us, each person in the capacity that he has created us for, I think there's absolute peace and joy in that surrender. When you're talking with singles though, isn't there uh, 
isn't there maybe a sense of resentment yeah. that creeps up in the lives of some people? Like, what's wrong yeah. with me, or yeah. what did I do wrong? Um, yeah, I, I, that's why I wrote the book. And not just resentment, but loneliness, I think, is a real, real feeling. Right, yeah. uh, going to church, the, more, the longer I'm single, the more I see how the relationship of singles with the church is a very tough one. Right. You don't feel like you belong in the United States. It's a, so there's a lot of uh, challenges for the single right now, as much as there's a lot of freedom to live what God has called you to. So if we can get out of our heads and get to the place in our souls where we see God's favor in our difficult circumstances, I think that is when we flourish. All right. Now, you also uh, have said that you could not survive without your iPhone. Yeah, that, that's, that's your probably loyal buddy, true. Huh? It, it is. I mean, I, I'm not going to lie. And now my work is through the phone. I've actually transitioned a couple of years ago out really? of the ER. Yeah. I did telemedicine. So in every way, I actually would probably not survive if I got yeah, rid yeah, of my yeah, iPhone. Yeah. So yeah, that is a sh I have two of them now. <laughs> yeah. And then we just talked to before we started recording today about the fact you just got back from a skiing trip. Right. So th is that your the way you stay healthy? or does I it exercise. I mean, I'm a doctor. I have to do my share. But I usually hit the elliptical. You know, that skiing is just for fun. Yeah. But I got, yeah, the Lord, yeah, it's good. He's, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of fun things to do in this world. It's, well, who knows? There may be some uh, male out there that is listening and going, man, I can't believe this woman. That's the perfect woman out there. I got to meet her. That's funny. But, uh, but you do have a website. Yeah. And people can find out more about uh, all your resources. Right. You have a couple of devotionals yeah. uh, as well. We'll just yeah. uh, quickly mention the, uh, one of them is just a Q and A a day. Huh? Yeah, it's a it's a journal type, and ev and you follow it for three years, so you can see how you've moved forward in your walk with the Lord. Okay, it's a fun little book, great gift book. And the other one is our devotional. It's awesome. It's a verse, a little write up about it, and then a question for the day, the daily dose. We call it, you know, the, the daily dose. Honor a, the a good medical prescriptive right. <laughs> right, 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 kind right. of thing for people, huh? <laughs> Well, Dr. Lena, it uh, is a pleasure hanging out with you, and thanks Likewise. for squeezing us into your Thank schedule. You. And uh, it's always a delight to meet someone with such passion. Thank you so much. And it's fun to be here. you've certainly got it. So, <laughs> Dr. Lena Abu Jamra, and Living with Power Ministries, is that's it? That's right. Livingwithpower.org. Dot org. org. Yep. Livingwithpower.org. Well, that's our program for today. As sages have told us, grow in wisdom, think humbly of yourself, and love one another. And may it be so with you. Join me next time for more of Moving People Forward. I'm Mark Elfstrand.